Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I want to talk about centre lathes, setting up your tail stock, how easy it is to have it set wrong and how you can set it correctly. And also, while on the subject of centre lathes, collet chucks, ER type collets or 5C type collets. And um, how, how great an ER collet chuck option might be for you. Cheers. When you're setting your tailstock, obviously you want the bore of the tailstock to be concentric with the center line of the spindle. And I used to do that with a dial indicator mounted on the chuck, and then I would um, tram the bore of the uh, tailstock spindle and dial it in concentric. And I did that in the old days before I realized the effect of gravity and that you're not getting it concentric, you're, you're going to be... Uh, you'll think it's concentric but it won't be concentric because gravity will be throwing you off. Um, so a better way to do it is to measure the diameter of the tailstock quill, in this case it's 40 millimeters, and turn a piece of stock to that diameter. So that's running true at the correct diameter and then put a dial indicator on that diameter and traverse it with the longitudinal slide and that sets and then you can see whether or not it's correct vertically or whether you need to make an adjustment. My tail stock was out and I needed to shim it up to get it uh, in line and then do the same thing on the front and you can usually make an adjustment there with this little screw here on either side until it is correct in the Y or, or cross travel direction. And set your uh, Y direction, your cross direction by a similar method. This is even more important than the vertical. Obviously if the tailstock center line is not in line with the spindle center line then when you're machining between centers you won't be machining a parallel part. So set it up on that diameter and, ch and adjust it until it is the same and you can also ch check how parallel the tailstock quill is to the longitudinal traverse here. Now that's really good I've got it within about half a hundredth of a millimetre I'm happy with that. In case you don't know what I mean by gravity effect what I mean is that the dial indicator is sagging down by the effect of gravity it's sagging down from the top and it's sagging which is towards the center line and it's sagging down from the bottom which is away from the center line. So if I was to set my quill height by this method it would not be accurate. And um, see how much there it's sweeping? 0 0.15 to 0 0.15, 0 0.16 out at the top and the same the other way. Um, that's a lot, you know, that's 6 or seven thou error. So don't use a dial indicator in this horizontal situation unless you really understand uh, the effect of gravity and how to eliminate it with a very stiff short dial indicator stand. If you're worried that the Morse taper inside your tailstock quill is off center, um, again, you're probably going to run a risk by checking that by rotating a dial indicator in there. Uh, probably better to use a micrometer and measure the wall section. Um, it's unlikely to be out the way these quills are made, but you could measure it with a micrometer uh, with a little ball bearing on one anvil in four places and check that the Morse taper is central to that quill outside diameter. When you're using micrometers to measure curved surfaces, as I am in that situation, it's good to have this little attachment, a little rubber uh, mounted ball bearing. So that's it there. And uh, you're using the ball bearing uh, to give you a, a ball shaped anvil on one side of the micrometer. Um, I'm not sure where you can buy those. I think this that one came with this micrometer set from memory. And if you're measuring, uh, for example, the Morse taper, then you need to be careful to set the micrometer into the same lengthwise position 
each time otherwise you'll be uh, getting an error from the taper effect so carefully align the, the anvil for example with the end of the tailstock quill so that you're not getting an error there um, but you'll find I, I would say that most tailstock quills will have their morse taper uh, pretty central just by the method that they're made unless it's a very worn uh, old lathe or perhaps a very poorly made lathe it should be pretty central so this is pretty central I've just checked it in the horizontal and in the vertical it's about two microns out that's um, you know a tenth of a thou so it's probably more the measuring technique than anything else so it's very concentric very often with the tailstock morse taper there is an issue there that you may not be aware of. Um, I've looked at a few lathes over the years and often there is uh, embedded little bits of chips or uh, gum, oil gum or residue or where the uh, taper has spun and the score marks in there and you just can't do accurate work if the tapered bore is contaminated. And one way, um, one very quick and practical way to um, get it refurbished if you're careful is to get some fine abrasive paste put a light coating over a morse taper or whatever taper you have in there um, that doesn't have a drive tang on it it needs to be a rotatable one and then just carefully work it in and out holding it holding it steady until you get a nice wear pattern showing over the full length of the taper. Um, if you're careful that will remove the gum and the burrs and the scores and get you back like new again. Obviously you don't want to coarse grit and you don't want to do it excessively but with a bit of care you can get your taper back like new again. Just putting tailstock back together now, I just thought I'd briefly talk about this uh, digital readout using a cheap uh, digital caliper on the top. You've probably, many of you have probably noticed it there in the past. Um, it's really handy, you know, if you're drilling a hole to a set depth and you just zero with the drills touching on the end and you can dial in and out and back your chips out and get to the exact depth that you want. Uh, inch or metric and um, it saves your brain to concentrate on more important things and you can drill accurately and uh, more concisely with a dial indicator mounted like that. There's different ways of doing it. Um, I just put a little split collar on the end and uh, machined a little slot here cut that off put a little slot there with a little screw there and uh, one cap screw there with a couple of washers so it's just above the deck there pretty simple basic setup there's more elegant solutions I'm sure but um, it gives you a rough idea the main thing is to have a digital readout on your tailstock if you if you're drilling holes or boring holes to a set depth countersink holes and so on is a big time saver and this is my setup on the bigger lathe I use a lot more coolant on this lathe for rough machining so I've got a cover just a simple little perspex removable cover and um, similar setup there with a cheap caliper a uh, slightly different way of connecting it on the end but pretty basic you know um, it's been so handy that I wish I'd spent a bit more time doing a more elegant job in the first place. But it works perfectly well, so I've just left it as it is. If you're thinking of fitting a collet chuck to your centre lathe, you've currently only got jaw chucks, you know, three jaw, four jaw chucks. There's a lot of advantages for certain types of work with a collet chuck. You know, it's a, a higher precision, clamps over the full diameter and um, you get more clearance around it as well than you do with the jaws whirling round on a three three jaw chuck for example and so then the decision is well do you get an ER style collet chuck like this one or do you get a 5C 
collet chuck like this one with a draw tube through from the back or some type of uh, more complicated 5C collet chuck that is tightened from the front. Well, I've just fitted both types of collet chucks to my Slant Pro lathe and if you're interested in that subject, have a look at my videos Slant Pro collet chucks etc I think it's called something like that where I go into this more deeply but here just an overview I found that this ER32 collet chuck which is a very cheap flange mounted collet chuck from uh, China it was only from memory about 40 US dollars 35 US dollars is actually better in most respects than the 5C collet system the main advantage of the ER system is that it clamps over a broader diameter range, so from 8 to 9 millimeters, from 9 to 10 millimeters, and it clamps down parallel in the bore. Whereas a 5C collet system is split only from one end and it can only accurately hold an exact diameter. If you want to hold something other than the specific collet capacity, then the bore is tapered and it only grips at the very front edge. So it's a, you need to have a big range of collets which makes it more expensive and you can only hold standard sizes. But with the ER system you only need a small range of collets and you can grip a range of one millimeter uh, per collet and it grips parallel inside. It's a very impressive system. It's been my findings so far. You can flange mount it onto a back plate with a little bit of clearance in your cap screws and then you can clock it up concentric very quickly and easily to the ER taper. So this type of ER32 is just flange mounted uh, with cap screws or bolts um, and you can dial it in very quickly and easily. You just nip up these screws and you can dial it in perfectly concentric in a matter of a few seconds and uh, so you, you can um, also use this to dial in your particular part, your particular job if it is not concentric or specifically uh, sl has slight errors in it you can dial in the job by loosening these screws and tapping the whole flange mount off center. So it's a very versatile system of precision, a flange mounted ER collet system. Here's my set of ER32 collets. Um, there's about uh, 15 or 16 I think and it goes from very small diameter up to 20 millimeters and that is every single diameter is covered because of this flexible range of one millimeter per collet. Now I know some of you will think well these are designed for tool holding not work holding um, and, and that's true they were developed for tool holding but um, that doesn't mean they don't work equally well for work holding. In many ways they have more advantages for work holding because of this wide range of diameters they can hold. And I've done some very heavy machining. Uh, you can see that in my Slant Pro series holding uh, very effectively with the short collets. They're not as long as the 5C uh, collets, but remember the 5C collet is cleared out from the back. You get the full length there uh, with this collet, uh, but it does hold remarkably securely. You know, it, it is it is a very rugged system for its size. ER collets versus 5C collets, very controversial. <laughs> We're just looking at this question of should we use 5C collets, collets, or should we use ER collets. Well, the more I think about this, the more un unhappy I am. I just have lack of knowledge about which is the best way to go. If you look on the forums, they argue endlessly about it. But but it's not based on science. It's just people's bias. And um, I've got a full set of a good set of of five C collets and a good set of ER thirty two collets. Which one should I use? Some people are arguing that this is what happens with a 5C collet, it only grips on the very tip and tip and, and it can't comply with diameters other than the size of collet 
that they say they are a, ha a half inch collets for a half inch precision diameter if you put in a smaller diameter it'll only grip very poorly and then I started thinking well how do we know that's what happens I mean maybe what happens when you tighten up the 5c collet is that that happens initially but when you tighten it up tight enough it buckles this, this is a sectional view of the collet it buckles in the middle here because it's thinned out here there's quite a big hole inside the collet on all the different sizes maybe that's to allow it to buckle so then it applies itself parallel to a smaller diameter and actually holds really well because the section is is each leaf section of the collet spring is buckling here exaggerated like that until you get really good conformation and, and locking and maybe the 5c system is good how can I test it to see whether it does or not so first of all I thought I'll get some bearing glue and apply it down inside the collet down in the depth of the bore and clamp it up on a deliberately smaller diameter and see whether it grips over a narrow zone or not but I couldn't really get a very effective transfer you know often bearing blue is not that great well, finally I had a good idea I turned up a piece of half inch down a ten thou so that's not as far down as it could be um, so it was uh, instead of 500 it was 490 and then tightened it up pretty tight and then just screwed it around it didn't seem to be gripping very well at all and then when I pulled it out I could see it was only really rubbing tight on the very front zone and that's pretty good evidence to me that a 5c collet only grips at the front unless it is an on spec size a precision fit in the collet it it doesn't close down well on sizes of less than its specified size okay so then I put the same piece into a ER32 collet uh, the 13 millimeter to 12 millimeter collet closed it down on that and tried it out for gripping and torque and yeah massively more well gripped um, huge clamping force compared with the 5c and um, you can see the when I skidded it under load you can see it's gripping over quite a long length at each end so a very much more powerful and even grip on a non-standard size with an ER collet system for the other side I thought I'd try out my ER32 collet chuck um, but you know it, that looks like quite a big ask for a, a long hangout in alloy steel machining a part and parting it off let's see how it goes
Oh, I'm most impressed. That is one rigid little chuck system. All right, thanks for watching. If you found some of that interesting and you wished I'd gone a bit more deeply into it, have a look at my other videos on uh, Slant Pro. Uh, I think it's called Chucks, Collets and Backplates. And a couple of other videos on the Slant Pro lathe where I go into some of these subjects in more depth. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.